I've had a couple kilograms of magnesium sulfate sitting around, so let's make some sulfuric acid from it. Minfo, sulfuric acid was first produced in the 1600s or the 17th century by Johann Glauber. He burned sulfur with saltpeter, which is potassium nitrate. In 1746, it really started to become something that could be produced in larger quantities when John Roebuck started doing it in lead-lined containers. A more refined process using these lead-lined containers or lead chambers was invented in the 1950s, and this is the method still used today. On the other hand, magnesium sulfate was first discovered in 1618 by a farmer in Epsom, England. I did not know this that Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate was named after the city it was found, Epsom, England. This particular farmer found that his cattle preferred certain water springs on his property, and he found that when they drank from those springs that their wounds healed faster, and after a little research he found that there was a salt in that water. But it wasn't until 1755 that Humphrey Davy isolated that salt and found out that it was magnesium sulfate. In our materials we need magnesium sulfate and distilled water. That's it, very basic. So magnesium sulfate uh, solubility in water is 26 grams per 100 milliliter. And if we multiply this by a liter, we get 260 grams. But in the past, I found that a saturated solution does not work for a lot of experiments. So I'm reducing this by 15%. So we multiply the 260 grams by 0.85, and we end up with approximately 220 grams per one liter. And I don't know how many liters it's going to take to fill this, but... That's what I'll be using as far as how much magnesium sulfate I'll be dissolving in this distilled water. There is one more thing you need, and that is a power source, and I forgot to mention this. I'll be using a DC voltage power support, so kind of a legit one, I guess. But you can use um, transformers like wall hogs uh, if you find 12 volts on one of them and cut the end off. Um, I do suggest you don't do this unless you know exactly what you're doing, but those actually will work for this experiment. Now to go over the reactions, and electrolysis is actually pretty complicated, so I'm going to try to simplify it here so that even I can understand it better. So initially we have this reaction, which is 2 H2O yields 2 hydrogens plus 2 OH, and you'll find that the hydrogens end up in here and the OH end up in here, which doesn't make perfect sense at first, but that's because we're dealing with electrolysis. So as I go on here, I'll explain what happens as the electrons flow through. The second one is real basic, the magnesium sulfate disassociates into two ions without electrolysis, magnesium and the sulfate ion, and these two will float around. With electrolysis, the sulfate is drawn towards the anode, which is the positive here, and the magnesium is drawn towards the cathode, which is the negative here, because opposites attract, of course. So when we put this into just the solution outside of this pot right here, those dissociated ions, as soon as we turn the power on, will start to move around. Because this pot, which is simply a flower pot with the bottom plugged, the sulfate ions will go through that. It is permeable to those and they will make their way into the pot. The magnesium ions, which are out here from the beginning, will stay out here and just make their way to the cathode. Before I go over this third reaction, I want to explain what is happening right here. So here's our power supply. We have a positive and a negative. You can see the negative is coming out. It ends and then it's picked up right here, is attached to the cathode. So the cathode is negative. I'm going to use copper and that'll be sitting in the solution of magnesium sulfate right here. No power is on yet. So the positive comes out and that's going to go to the anode here and that's going to go inside of the flower pot which is going to only have distilled water in it when we start. This electrode is made of lead oxide and I had done that in a previous video. If you first turn on the power supply, nothing's going to happen because this is only distilled water inside the pot and you can't electrolyze distilled water. It's just not possible, not with the amount of power we're working with. So when you start to get sulfite ions coming through the pot and in here, now there's ions that can transfer electricity throughout this container. So we will start to see the amperage increase. The voltage will stay the same, but as those sulfate ions increase inside the pot, the amps go up as more current is traveling through the circuit. So when the power is turned on, the electrons are actually flowing this direction. Out the negative, again come back here, down here into the copper, through this solution with the ions, through the permeability of this pot right here. They're then picked up with the lead dioxide electrode, and back they go in through the positive. So that is the typical circuit that runs through a solution no matter what it is, as long as there's a salt in there, that's the direction the electrons move. Now, as they're moving through this and they end up in here, they'll eventually make their way, of course, over to this anode here. And at the anode, the anode steals electrons from the water that's in there, giving off oxygen. So we'll see oxygen bubbling here. 
leaving hydrogen and that hydrogen will then be taken up quickly by the sulfate ions because they're opposite charge. So that's what this last reaction is. It's H2O yields two electrons plus O2 plus H plus. So these two electrons are stolen by the anode because the electricity is flowing this way and it takes it from the water, leaving the oxygen, which bubbles, and the hydrogen, which is here, then connects with the SO4 negative to make our H2SO4, which is our sulfuric acid, of course. Then the electrons go through the power supply, come out the negative here, which continues over here, comes back, and they're given back to the water. When that happens, hydrogen is released as a gas, so we'll have hydrogen bubbling over here, just as the oxygen will be over here, and then it also releases the OH negative. So hydrogen was released on this side, the rest of the water OH is released on this side when the electrons are given back to the water, and that will combine with the magnesium, which we already talked about, to produce our magnesium hydroxide. The other thing I want to quickly mention is that over here at the cathode, you can use any metal you want. Because the magnesium hydroxide is gathering around it, it doesn't break down and bother the solution here. So whatever metal you put in here is fine. I'm going to use copper. Over here, the lead dioxide electrode works really well for this reaction. If you don't have that, you can use graphite, but graphite tends to break down. You can filter it out when you're done. And if you're very, very fortunate, you can use platinum. And the very last thing I want to mention is that this pot cannot have any holes in it. That's pretty obvious, I guess, but I wanted to mention it. So that's it. Let's go make some sulfuric acid from Epsom salts named after the city in England. Making another lead dioxide electrode. Copper on that side, lead on this side, and I'm just using that 9 volt battery. So you can get a lead strip, you can do this at home. Here's the basic setup for our experiment. So here, of course, is the power unit. These are the two electrodes. I've got C and a negative here. This is the cathode and the negative. So over here, this is the anode and the positive. This is a piece of copper. I took a copper pipe and just smashed it into a plate. So that'll be the cathode. And on the anode here, as you saw, I made a lead dioxide electrode. So this will be filled up with the magnesium sulfate uh, solution here. I do have a magnetic stirrer that will be running just to keep it moving around. And just pure distilled water will be going in here. And over here, this will be around 12 volts that will be running. 220 grams of magnesium sulfate pre-weighed. Filling up the one liter beaker with distilled water. Turning on the stir bar. And dissolving the 220 milligrams, I'm sorry, grams, of magnesium sulfate. Done. I'll be doing this, of course, more than once in order to fill up that uh, glass container. Ten minutes later, it is completely dissolved. So I'm going to turn this down here and transfer it over to the glass pan. So I'm transferring the first liter here of magnesium sulfate solution. It's not quite full. I'm going to put in a little bit more. For the second batch, I did not do a full liter. This is a two liter pan, this glass pan here, but it's not going to be filled to the top, that's for sure. It's just too dangerous to have it leak all over. Possibly, especially with the uh, magnetic stir. Okay, it's filled as much as it's going to be. Now I'm going to fill the pot with distilled water. Filling this unglazed clay pot with distilled water. I'm going to turn the voltage up here. There won't be much happening at first because the distilled water in the pot is not going to do anything as far as transferring ions until some of the ions from the magnesium sulfate, particularly the sulfate, leak in there. Hold to the anode. All right, 12.8, close enough. I'll be back here when something starts happening. We just started to pull a pretty low amperage there, 0 0.009 amps. So those sulfate ions have just crossed the clay pot, and that's the result of that. Um, we'll just have to continue to monitor this, and we should see that wattage and amperage continue to go up. We can see the amps are slowly creeping up. Right now they're at 0 0.012. It's been about 35 minutes. We'll know that the ions are really transferring well when we see hydrogen bubbles form here at the cathode. We're at 0.27 amps, so it's gone up a bit there. And over here, you can see the hydrogen bubbles just start to come off of that copper strip. Now the hydroxide of the water is also coming to this side, making magnesium hydroxide, of course. So 
we'll watch that. But right now, I want to take and test this solution for acidity. And we can compare it right here. And it's anywhere between 7, which is neutral, and 6, closer to 7 almost. So not really a lot of acidity in there right there right now, but we'll check it periodically. We're one hour in, and we just crossed one watt right here. So things should start to slowly speed up. Slowly speed up. I think that's an oxymoron. To help this move slowly faster, I'm going to try to tilt this lead oxide. There we go. Just putting more of it inside the actual uh, water there. If I zoom in just a little bit, like right there, okay, maybe a little bit too much, but you can see the hydrogen pouring off of the copper electrode on this side, and you can clearly see the oxygen coming off of the lead dioxide electrode on this side. It's just over an hour. I'm going to recheck the pH. Maybe closer to a 6 than a 7 that time. If you look at the very end here, maybe even a five somewhere. Anyways, it's definitely getting more acidic. An hour and a half later, and we finally passed two watts. You can also see this kind of milky stuff coming off here. Some of this is hydrogen bubbles, but this is also magnesium hydroxide being made and instantly dissolved in the water. One hour and 45 minutes in, and it's still going nicely. I'm going to check the pH again. And we're starting to get a little bit of red in it, just a little bit, somewhere in the uh, between the five and the four there, closer to four. Nice. We're two and a half hours out. We're up to four watts or 0.335 amps has climbed from 0 0.009. And this is just an indication of how many ions are in solution throughout this, but mostly in here because we started with just pure distilled water. All right, about three hours out. We are at 0.365 amps and 4.4 watts, basically. But what is becoming very noticeable is the magnesium hydroxide that's gathering on this side over here. So I'm going to go ahead and check uh, the pH here now in the sulfuric acid pot, so to speak. And we've got some good red there, which is definitely what you're looking for. So I'd say that's at about a three right now. And while we're at it, let's check the magnesium hydroxide side and yeah that's getting quite a bit darker too i put that around 10 9 10 right now three hours out and this is cooking there is a lot of bubbling going on uh the amperage continues to raise so as long as that keeps going up we know we have ions being switched when that stops or stop starts going down we know that everything has met its match so to speak um and the experiment will be over and just so we really don't get bored with this Here's a red laser going through some soupy magnesium hydroxide. Four hours out, we're at 0.4 amps. We're still getting a lot of bubbling. I'm going to check the pH here. That's really close to a two right there. I think it's darker than a three. So we continue to lower the pH, which is a great sign. We're five hours out and neither the amperage nor the wattage has changed. The voltage has been the same the entire time, of course. So I'm going to start winding things down here. I'm going to check the pH here. And if it hasn't changed much either, I'm going to maybe wait another 20 minutes or so and we'll turn this off. And that's still really close to a two. It hasn't darkened to one. That would be very difficult to do with this experiment. So it's at about a two here. I think that's it. So I'm going to leave it for another half hour and then we're going to turn everything down. been 30 minutes and our amperage has actually dropped slightly so it is definitely time to call it quits here as soon as the circuit stops uh, running so to speak with the electrolysis the ions will be free to start going the other direction inside of uh, or through the pot here i should say so what i'm gonna do is pull out the uh, lead electrode there and then dump the uh, sulfuric acid into a beaker right away this right here you see is paper toweling so i don't get any of the magnesium hydroxide dripping down the pot and into the sulfuric acid as I pour it into the beaker. Okay, explained enough right there. So here we go. Take this out right here. I'm going to set that right there. Here's our sulfuric acid, which I'm going to pour into a beaker right away. Done.
So I'm going to turn off the magnetic stir and the power supply here. Pull out the copper electrode on this side, which is pretty much untouched, and move this large basin here of magnesium hydroxide out of the way. Looking at this dish of magnesium hydroxide, we can see it started to come out of solution in a couple places, especially in the corners, probably because of the stir being right there, up there, here, and in this corner also. So we got quite a bit. Uh, this is not pure enough to save for anything, so I'll probably toss it. Now that everything's cleaned up, we can see our sulfuric acid of unknown concentration. There's 250 milliliters of it. And uh, next, I'd like to test uh, for sulfuric acid with a method I've never tried before. It's using barium nitrate. And then after that, I'd like to boil this down to see how concentrated I can get it. This is the barium nitrate test I was talking about. I poured just a small amount of the uh, sulfuric acid we made in here. I think there was around 10 milliliters in there. And then I took some barium nitrate and put it in a separate 100 milliliter beaker here and just added about 10 milliliters of uh, distilled water. Barium nitrate doesn't like to dissolve much, but the solutions definitely got it in there. So when I put the barium nitrate into the sulfuric acid, we're gonna uh, develop barium sulfate, if this is truly sulfuric acid, and that's insoluble, and you'll see it as a kind of a milky white substance. So I'm going to do this right now. It's always fun to do something you've never done before. Oh my goodness, check this out here. I can see that. Well, at least we confirmed the presence of sulfuric acid. All right, I'm going to boil the rest down. The sulfuric acid is getting boiled down to see how concentrated it can get. The sulfuric acid had boiled down to 100 milliliters, so I put it in a smaller beaker here, and it continues to boil. It's down to its last 25 milliliters, so I'm going to turn it off at this point. Um, unfortunately, from above, you don't see that really dense white smoke, so we know it's not concentrated sulfuric acid, but I am going to check it with pH paper. One final check of the pH of the boiled down sulfuric acid that started as magnesium sulfate, or Epsom salts. Pure sulfuric acid has a pH of zero. And I'm sure this is concentrated. Just how much is going to be hard to tell because I don't have enough to even weigh it properly. But I think we're at a pH of 1 there. I really do. That looks pretty safe and the same to me. So if I can use this for some experiment in the future where this concentration is needed and not very much of it, I'll use it.